In these problems, we are graphing inequalities. And the first thing we need to do is solve them for x before we can graph them. Probably the easiest way to do this so as not to get confused when you see inequalities like this, these compound inequalities, is to break them into two problems. So there's one inequality to solve, and there's the other. So I would write that out like this. Negative 18 is less than or equal to 2x, and 2x is less than or equal to 12. Now to go about solving these, we're simply going to uh, do what we would to solve for x in an equation. So I'll divide both sides by 2 over here, and we get negative 9 is less than or equal to x. And then I usually like to write them the other way around. This, if you read it from uh, right to left, this would be x is greater than or equal to negative 9. So I'm just going to write it that way. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing, divide by 2, and we get x is less than or equal to 6. So that's the first step. Now to graph them, we're going to be graphing these on a number line. So let's just make our number line here. And two points of interest here are negative 9 and positive 6. So I'll just put those on, negative 9 and positive 6. Now let's take this a piece at a time. x is greater than or equal to negative 9. I'm going to put this just below the graph so we can think about it first. I would have the point negative 9 there because it's got the or equal to. And then it would be everything greater than that as well. So it would be stretching off that way. Now, x is less than or equal to 6 would be that point 6, and then everything stretching off in the less than direction. What we want with a compound inequality like this is to choose the area of overlap. So that area right in there. So when I graph this on a number line, it's really going to be this point, this point, and all the stuff in between. That's going to be your correct graph for that one. Let's try another one. This one's slightly more tricky. I'm going to go ahead and split this up into two problems, like that. So I've got negative 4 is less than or equal to negative 4x minus 8. And I've got negative 4x minus 8 is less than 4. So the first thing I'm going to need to do here is add 8 to both sides to get the x term alone. So that brings us a positive 4 and negative 4x. And now here, I need to divide by a negative 4. And remember, when you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, you flip the sign. So this is going to be a negative 1 over here. We flip the sign so it's greater than or equal to instead of less than or equal to. And we just have x over here. Again, I'm just going to flip this around to write it in the way I'm most comfortable with. This is x is less than or equal to negative 1. All right, so there's one side done. Uh, we'll do the similar thing on, on this side. Add 8 first. We get negative 4x is less than 12. We'll divide by a negative 4. Remember to flip the sign. And we get x is greater than negative 3. Let's graph this. And again, we'll put our points of interest on here. We've got a, uh, a negative 3, and we've got a negative 1. Now, it says x is less than or equal to negative 1. So it would be a filled in dot, and then everything off in this direction. And x is greater than negative 3. And since it doesn't have the equal, we're not going to include negative 3. So it would be one of those empty dots. And then everything stretching off in the greater than direction. And again, we want the overlap, so we want this chunk right here. So when we put that on our graph, we'll have open circle there, everything filled in up to the negative 1, and a filled in circle there. This next one has slightly different uh, notation. So it's got this sort of set notation. This is x, where x is greater than negative 3, and x is less than 0. Now this one, we don't have to do any solving because we've got our two chunks already solved for x. We can just go ahead and graph this. Our points of interest, negative 3 and 0. And we have x is greater than negative 3, so that would be uh, empty circle and stretching off that way. We have x is less than 0, another empty circle, and stretching off that way. And again, because it says and, which you can read these compound inequalities that we did up here as and problems. This one tells us it's an and problem by using the word and. You want where they're both true, where they overlap. So when we put this on the graph, we will have that, that, and those points in between. All right, let's try one more. 
So same kind of notation, x, where x is less than negative 2 or x is uh, greater than or equal to 0. Now an or means that we don't want the overlap, we want both branches of this because either one or the other would make it true, would, make, would satisfy this. So we have to put both of them on. So let's go ahead and graph this. Our points of interest negative 2 and 0 and we've got x is less than negative 2. Now uh, we would graph that like this, right? Empty circle because it doesn't have an equal and uh, stretching off in the less than direction or x is greater than or equal to 0, so that would be a filled in circle and stretching out this way. And then when we come to graph it, you'll notice there's no overlap. And that's okay because this is an or problem, so we graph both of those branches. So going that way and going off that way. So that's a little bit of work with graphing inequalities.